for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for just bringing us to this place at this time to hear from you, Father God. Father God, now we ask if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us of any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, Father God. Cleanse us right now in areas that we know of that we need to grow and mature, Father God. Help us to repent, turn away, and walk in your goodness, walk in your orders, walk in your statutes, Father God, that we can be delivered forevermore, Father God. Now we pray you open our eyes so that we can behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows and blossoms, and produces fruit unto righteousness in our lives for your glory. Now, Father God, let me decrease and you increase, hide me behind the cross, speak through lips of clay, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So, first and foremost, want to welcome and thank everyone who decided to join us this morning in worship. If I haven't already done so, or if you were late walking in or missed the welcome on the live stream. Welcome to House of Triumph this morning. So today I just want to talk about a very, very simple principle that every person on the planet can benefit from. But it's something that is necessary for the kingdom. And that principle is simple. And you can write this in your notes if you are taking notes. God wants your obedience. Amen. God Amen. wants your obedience. Mm -hmm. hmm. right. Had to say it right. twice just in case you missed it. Mm -hmm. Now, on the surface, that's one of those, well, duh, right? <laughs> Who doesn't know that God wants our obedience? Oh, yeah. And that's very well true. However, if it's that obvious of a statement, if it's that obvious of a principle, then why is it that we find it so very difficult at times to give God what he wants, mm -hmm. which is our obedience? God wants our obedience. We know that God wants our obedience, yet we struggle in giving him that very thing. So the goal for today is not only for us to recognize and affirm that God wants our obedience, but to triumph over some of the things that we trip over in striving to give God the obedience that he wants. So, we're going to start our journey looking at the story of Jonah. Looking at the story of Jonah. The story of Jonah is found in the book of Jonah. Duh. <laughs> Where else would it be? Um, the story of Jonah is found in the book of Jonah. And I'm not going to get bogged down into the specific obedience address because we really need the entire interaction between God and Jonah, which is ne necessary to extract the principle we are trying to possess. But we will start with verse 1 of Jonah, which reads as follows. Jonah 1.1. 1, 1. We're going to do verses 1 and 2. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, instructions, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Very simple instruction God gave Jonah. Mm -hmm. Jonah, go to Nineveh, preach. Yeah. Right? Go, go down to Nineveh, <laughs> preach. Where did Kobe used to play that thing? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> damn. But, um, but a lot of us are familiar with the story of Jonah. Instead of Obeying, God wants your obedience. Mm -hmm. Instead of obeying what God told him to do, Jonah got on the boat, <laughs> went the opposite direction that God told him to go. And 
all of these other things begin to happen to him, not because he was disobedient, but he wasn't going where he was supposed to go. It's just, it's just one of those interesting things. If you go in where you supposed to go, you won't be in the wrong place at the wrong time when the wrong Amen. thing happened. I was in a car accident one time. Went out with my friends on a Sunday morning. Supposed to be going to church. Decided to go. I was grown. I was three times seven. I was <laughs> an adult. I could do what I want to do. I'm going to go to church and go play basketball with the boys. Car accident. I don't know what would have happened if I would have decided to go to church that day, but I know I wouldn't have been in the wrong place at the wrong time for that car accident. Jonah finds himself going somewhere else in his disobedience, mm -hmm. gets in a storm on a ship, they throw him overboard, gets swallowed up by the whale, spends three days inside the great fish. The <laughs> theologians beat me up. Yeah. Inside of the great fish, prays to God, whale spits him out on the shore of the place that he was supposed to be going anyway. <laughs> It's funny how your adversity sometimes will bring you right back to That's where right. God was trying to get you to go anyway. That's a whole other message, a whole other message. I'm trying to stay focused on God wants your obedience today. Then in Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, look at what happens next. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give you. Look at this. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. And I got to pause so I can fast forward. A pause right there. The first time he disobeyed, got in all types of nonsense. Mm -hmm. This time he obeys. And Jonah obeys God and does what God instructs him to do. And in doing so, the people of Nineveh repent of their sinful lifestyle. They repent for their idol worship and their ungodly practices. So God sent Jonah to do something that really didn't have anything to do with Jonah. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the people of Nineveh. Yeah. Right, right. And, 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 and because God knew who he was sending, he knew what would happen would be the result. But look at this. When we jump down to Jonah 3, chapter, I mean, chapter 3, verse 10, and going all the way into chapter 4, verse 3, we see the heart of Jonah. We see the heart of Jonah. And this is the first point of why we struggle to give God what he wants because God wants our obedience. When God, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But, jo but to Jonah, there go Jonah, he in his feelings. Mm -hmm. This seemed very wrong. He had become angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still home? That is what I would I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarsus. I knew that you are a gracious God, a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Period. Now, Lord, oh, I'm sorry, sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah had originally chosen not to obey God because he didn't agree with what God was going to do through him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God wants your obedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jonah did. Jonah understood the assignment. He just didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. now, now I'm talking to y'all. Yeah. Right, right. He, he didn't agree with it. And because he didn't agree with it, he chose to rebel. Mm -hmm. He chose to disagree. He chose not to obey because he didn't agree with God. God didn't ask Jonah for his agreement. God asked Jonah for his obedience. Wow. One of the things that hinder us from obeying God is, it, is we think we got to agree with God in order to obey God. Mm -mm -mm, you're messing up. Let me tell you something. We do things all the time people instruct us to do that we don't necessarily agree with. Let me let me go ahead. I, I should do this on social media because I might get in trouble. Sometimes I don't agree with the speed limit. Amen. 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 Sometimes I don't. Oh, thank you. I got so uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a rich driver, right. but it's like a video game. <laughs> but uh, sometimes I don't agree with the speed limit, right? Uh -huh. But 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 I do the speed limit because I understand there are consequences associated with me breaking the law. I obey because not because I agree, 
but I understand that there's an authority that set that standard in place that I need to adhere to. When I was growing up, there was a litany of things my mother would tell me to do that I didn't agree with. And sometimes I would ask her why I had to do them. You know what she would say to me? She said, because I said so. Right. Because I said so. She didn't care if I didn't agree that I needed to clean my room. Because right. I said so. She didn't agree that I didn't, she didn't care that I didn't agree on what she cooked for dinner. Yeah. If you better eat it, you're going to go be hungry. Because she said so. Yep. Kids in Africa starving. Children in Africa starving. Y'all know. Y'all see, y'all thought I was making that up, right? Y'all thought the reason why I don't waste food, I always tell us, my mom said, children in Africa starving. We don't waste food. Now y'all give me all this food to this unhealthy, but I can't throw it away, so I got to eat it. Because that's how I was raised, Sister Plum, you telling on yourself. But I'm praying, don't stop cooking. Don't stop cooking. But praise God. But my mom didn't need or ask me for my agree agreement. She needed my obedience. Yes. She needed my obedience. Young children, brush your teeth like your parents tell you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, don't need to, you may not feel like it. You'll thank them in about 20 years. Yep. <laughs> You'll thank them in about 30 years. <laughs> they, they, your agreement is not necessary. There are an abundance of reasons we may not agree with God. But when we understand that God is not a malicious God, mm -hmm. when we understand that God is a loving God, that God is not a hateful God, yes. but he is a compassionate God. When we understand that Romans 8, 28, all things are working to the good of them who love the Lord and are called to his, according to his purposes, then we can move past, watch this, move past the momentary disagreement because there is an eternal agreement rooted in our relationship with God that is greater than the moment. Yes. Ooh, you got to move past the moment and understand this relationship with God is forever. Yes. So you may... Disagree, but don't disobey. Mm, mm. You don't have to agree with God in the moment to obey God in the moment. Y'all wow. yes. all right? Yes. You don't have to agree with God in the moment to obey yes. God in the moment. He does not need your agreement. God needs your obedience. Yes. Let's go a little yes. deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Luke 5, verse 4 through 6. And this is the story of, that's familiar to many of us, the um, net breaking scenario with Peter. Now, this is talking about Jesus. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answered un said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. So here we have an interaction between Jesus and Peter, the disciple of Jesus. Peter was a fisherman by occupation. He was very experienced and knowledgeable at his craft. He had been fishing all day. Professional fisherman, fishing all day, didn't catch anything. Then this son of a carpenter, mm -hmm. <laughs> not a son of a fisher, uh -huh. this son of a carpenter, teacher, says, Peter, let me tell you something about fishing. Let me help you out here. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anybody else, but the hairs on my pride neck just got a little bit Wow, really? But it was Jesus. I'm going to give him a pass because I know how the whole book go. Uh -huh, Peter, didn't, yeah. Peter didn't have that, um, you know, information. But Peter begins the conversation by expressing all the efforts as a career fisherman he has put in up to now. Yeah. Again, Peter knew what he was doing as a fisher. Uh -huh. He knew he was like, Jesus, we've been out here all day and all night. Big to the other, up, down, the down. Move around, you know, do the hokey pokey, did everything. We ain't caught nothing. But then he says, nevertheless, Peter submits to the command of Jesus. Listen, because of Peter's obedience, not only his experience, not only because of Peter's, I'm going to say this right, because of Peter's obedience, not Peter's experience. Mm. Yeah. Because of Peter's yeah. obedience, yeah. not Peter's experience, he was blessed with a harvest that he could not receive. The text states that the fish catch was so great that the nets began to break, 
And verse 7 goes on to say, they called their friends who were in the other ship to come and help them gather all the fish. And the catch was still so great that both ships begin to sink. Mm. Mm. This is the same principle of God wants your obedience at work. Listen, sometimes we fail to give God our ob obedience because we don't agree with him, right? right, right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we fail to obey God because we think we know more about the subject than God. We're so smart. We got so many pedigrees and so many awards and so many acknowledgments that we know how to do this without you, God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Goodness. That's true. Oh my! We 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 get so proud and so vain and 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 all the high fives and preach, Doc. Oh, you said that thing. I'm just doing the preacher thing right now. Uh -huh. But you understand right. how people will gas you up and make yeah. you believe that it's you and not God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me tell you something. God doesn't need your experience. God needs your obedience. Because he took a fisherman and made him a bishop. Oh my goodness! Because you understand, eventually Peter becomes a bishop. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you study the Bible, he took he 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 took he took a prostitute and made her legendary in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He it didn't matter about her past experience. It didn't matter whether she was a, 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 a and there were some theologians who thought they knew more than Jesus and got rebuked and whipped constantly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't need, God doesn't need our experience. He needs yeah. our obedience. Stop getting hung up with why you won't do it God's way because you know better or you know so much. <sighs> mm -hmm. That's a good word. I got one more, y'all. One more. Second Kings. <sighs> Chapter 5. It's a little bit lengthy. Verses 7 through 14. Second. 2 Kings. Chapter 5. Verses 7 through 14. Got this good lightning here. It's putting a glare on my tablet. <laughs> All right. Um, and it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God? to kill and to make alive, that this man doeth sin unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Hmm. Are not the Abana and Parfer rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Hmm. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Hmm. And his servants came there and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would if thou not have done it, how much rather than when he saith to thee, wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Mm -hmm. Naaman had a need. Mm -hmm. Naaman had leprosy. And Laman went Naaman went to the man of God and got instructions. He, he, the man of God told Naaman what to do. Naaman didn't approve. Mm -hmm. Naaman didn't approve mm -hmm. of the way God said he would be delivered. So he got angry. Mm -hmm. And it had it not been the wisdom, you know, it, it matters who you hang around by. That's That's if right. it had not been the wisdom mm -hmm. of his servants, mm -hmm. Naaman may not have ever obeyed the instruction from God's prophet, all because God's way wasn't Naaman's way. Mm. 
Wow. Mm. God doesn't need you to understand or approve. That's right. He needs your obedience. That's right. <laughs> he doesn't need you to understand or I'm still trying to figure out how Jesus walked on water to this day. <laughs> I was, and if Peter would have tried to figure that out, he would have never got out the boat. But right. God didn't need him. All he needed to do, he needed Peter to obey when he said, Come. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. God doesn't need you to understand it. Yeah. He doesn't need you to put your, your seal of approval doesn't mean anything. That's right. God. Right. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, you, you don't have to agree with God to obey God. Mm. You don't ha you don't have to overthink the situation, just obey God. Yeah. And you don't have to approve his plan. Mm. Just obey him. Listen. I'm just about done. Because we got to just stop trying to justify disobedience because of our opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. wow. Stop trying to justify disobedience because of your feelings. I ain't going to church because I'm hurt. You're disobedient. Whether you hurt or not. Oh, my. Okay. I, I, I felt God all in that. Because uh -huh. <laughs> God didn't say assemble because you feel good. Amen. Mm. All right. We got to stop trying to justify disobedience because of our logic. Mm. Man, some people, they just think themselves right out of the will of God. Mm. They just they just rationalize themselves right out of a blessing. Mm. All because they just won't obey. We have to stop trying to justify disobedience because God is asking you to do it a different way. Yeah. <sighs> His ways are not our ways. That's right. His thoughts are his thoughts are not our thoughts. Mm. <sighs> I gotta stop trying to justify disobe disobeying God just because you want to disobey. Because mm -hmm. the reality is, sometimes God is asking us to do something we just don't want to do. do. It. That's yeah. true. Just don't want to do it. That's right. That's right. Some be disobedient all the time. <laughs> nah, here. He be disobedient all the time. Go to bed. Just don't want to do it. Take a shower. Just don't want to do it. Just don't want to do it. Turn the game off. Mm -mm. Definitely. Just don't, just don't want to do it. Just don't want to do it. And try to justify it. I went to school all day. I should be able to play my games. I can take a shower in the morning. I don't need these teeth. You can brush your teeth. No, I need to be good with the teeth. Seriously. But... For real, for real. I use that because a lot of times we just don't want to do it. And we make up excuses. Look, we do it in the natural, don't we? Mm -hmm. Don't we do it in the natural? Yeah. Just don't want to go to work. We find something wrong to, 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 to justify that PTO yes. or that yes, day off. Yes, we yes. feel somebody, ooh, my, my, my thigh is itching. I can't go to work today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, we, yes, just, sir. we justify. Yes, we do. We do. And... I want you guys to catch this. I want you guys to catch this. First Samuel chapter 15, 22. Very familiar. Um, I'm just going to take a part of it. And Samuel said, and he, he's dealing with Saul when Saul disobeys. And he doesn't do what he, when Saul disobeys, and mm -hmm. he keeps the best um, cattle. Yeah. And then the prophet approaches him, Samuel, and says, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. I'm going to stop right there. To obey is better than sacrifice. Beloved, listen to me when I say this. Every time, every time we fail to obey God, there is a sacrifice being made in our lives. I'm not talking about Jesus on the cross mm -hmm. sacrificing mm -hmm. for us. But every time we obey, there is a sacrifice being made in our lives. The sacrifice may be time because now you have to do it over God's way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice may be your health because you did something that was not beneficial, but you did it anyway. And now your body is suffering because of it. The sacrifice may be self-inflicted hurt because your ego or pride takes a hit it would have never had experience if you had just obeyed. Yeah. Sometimes doing things my way and I have to learn from the school of hard knocks instead of trusting God. Yeah. My Amen. ego and my pride takes a hit. Amen. Sometimes that sacrifice is money when we don't trust God when he tells us to do what to do with it. 
Oh, I think y'all right, thought I was right. going to say give it to the church. No, no, but, <laughs> when, no, no, no. When God tells you what to do with it, but you go and get tickets to see Beyonce anyway, y'all know I'm a hate on Beyonce. Y'all know that's what I'm going to do. But anyway, but, 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 and Taylor but, Swift. <laughs> and Taylor Swift too, amen. But, 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 but y'all but y'all understand, we, we, we like things, we want things, and y'all know me, I like things. Ain't nothing wrong with having things, but not at the expense of disobeying God. That's right. Right. <laughs> Some of the very activities that are in direct contradiction to God's instruction for humanity causes the sacrifices to our physical and mental well-being. Mm. Just, just things that are like obvious. Thou shalt not lie. You ever lie? How was your conscience afterwards? Seriously, unless you just don't care. I, I'm, I'm talking to the believer today. I ain't talking about the heathens. Heathens, if you're watching, thank you for joining us today. I don't know why you hit the button, but um, hope you're getting some of this. <laughs> but, but, but the reality is things, things that are like, there, there shouldn't be so much fuss and argument about things that God has made clear. Yeah. And then it causes struggle in our lives. Amen. You know, I, I mean, the, the big one is, of course, the whole gender thing. Like, and like, like what God says about it, we should just obey it. I, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be funny or, or there's no phobias here at all. We should just obey it. That doesn't mean you can't love the person, but you right. cannot accept the behavior. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. All unrighteousness is sin. My mom loved me in all my unrighteousness. She didn't watch this. She didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. But she still loved me. Yeah. She didn't agree with all the foolishness I was doing, but she never stopped. And that's how we're supposed to be as representatives of the kingdom. We still have to love people. Mm -hmm. But when they ask what we think about it, all you got to really do is say, well, God says this and leave it at that. And guess what? God don't need. God don't need their agreement. <laughs> mm -hmm. God don't need their understanding. <laughs> God don't need their experience. God don't need their, 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 their feelings because... His word is the final law. That's we right. have to really get that. And, and God didn't say those things. God doesn't have any malicious intent for humanity. Mm. He has no malicious intent for humanity. How do I know this? I'm glad you asked. Because he so loved the world. That's about as mm. all-encompassing as you can get. Mm. That he sent his only begotten son that whosoever. God has no ill intent. His, his desire is that all should receive Jesus and none should perish. So these edicts that he has placed into position are because of love, not because he's judgmental or condemning or wants to fire and brimstone us. He doesn't want any of us to suffer. He doesn't want us to have to sacrifice. I love the sacrifice in the Bible that the people give in celebration. Mm. Not because they done messed up and have to give things right. I love the praise offering. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the wave offering. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those, those are the ones I like to read about. I was like, just, just like, God, you gave us so much. Here, take some back. That's what I'm like. I'm like, oh, we done messed up now, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you the scapegoat, buddy. Mm. You know, we're going to walk you outside. I don't know, I, 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 but, but, that, but that's how we should be. We should, we should be able to be cheerful givers. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, my Jesus. Just imagine. Just imagine how much you would have in life if you didn't have to suffer or loss or sacrifice because you just obeyed God without processing it through. Because when you process it through, you process it through your human nature. That's right. Apostle Richie always tells us this. This is so good. He says, for the believer, he's like, trust your first thought. Mm -hmm. He says, trust your first thought. He says, because spirit moves faster than flesh. He mm -hmm. says, he said, so when you get that first inclination, he's like, that's the spirit telling you what to do. Don't make that turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's the way I always go. Oh, you just started processing it through your yeah, flesh. Right. Yeah. You turn that corner. Woo! Oh, I didn't know there was a cop behind that bush. I'm going to get my favorite work together. It's just, it's, and, 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 and that's just, you know, that's something that's happened to me. So I'm just using my own example. <laughs> if it happened to you too, well, you know, coincidence. But, um, you know, but, but, but when you start to, and the, the longer and deeper you start to process that thing, just you start bringing all of your mm -hmm. agreement into it, mm -hmm. all of your experience into it, mm -hmm. all of your logic to it. And that is so not what God instructs us. No, mm -hmm. God says, acknowledge me, not yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
He says, acknowledge me in all your ways and I'll direct your path. We, yes. we, we ask everybody, we call everybody, and God be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, all, we all say we want to please God. We all say we want God to get the glory out of our lives. John 10, 10, Jesus says, and he's talking specifically about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He says the thief come, he's calling the Pharisees and the Sadducees thieves mm -hmm. in context. Check it out. The thief come not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's saying, listen, he's saying the teaching of the Pharisees, the religious behaviors of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the way they go about is to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. He says, but I come. That you can have life yes. and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. That B part right there. Mm -hmm. The B part says that Jesus came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Obedience adds to us abundance. Obedience adds, because Jesus came to show us how to live. Not to enforce the law, but to fulfill the law. He came to model how we can live so that we can have life and have it more abundantly instead of ritually. Obedience adds to us while disobedience is the catalyst for sacrifice. Mm. If you look at the Bible, whenever there was a sacrifice, disobedience was the catalyst for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, I just easy yeah. for me. It's easy. Yeah. Adam and Eve. Disobedience. Now I got to go and kill this lamb to cover y'all. Mm. Your disobedience right, right. was the cause for blood being shed. That's just an easy example. I want to live in a place of obedience so I can live in the place of abundance. Mm -hmm. And the place of abundance is reached by our obedience. Mm. The place of abundance is reached by our obedience. Isn't it amazing that God wants our obedience, but if we give him our obedience, it takes us to the place of abundance. Mm. Yeah. It takes us... God didn't care about the opinion of the ten spies who didn't think they could take the promised land. Yeah. All he wanted was obedience. Mm -hmm. right. The place of promise was reached by obedience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. It's always reached by obedience. The miracles of God came as a result of obedience. Get the two fish and the five loaves. God, surely that's not enough to feed all of these people. What do you think? No, they just went and got it. Get the barrels of water. Whatever this man tells you to do, it turns the water into wine. It was obedience. It wasn't second guessing God. They were, and then and we we get to look at him like, wow, look at God. But if you read into what really happened, they were obedient, mm. and the miracles of God. Dramatic pause. <laughs> And a lot of times we wonder why the miracles of God aren't in the house like they used to be. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we wonder why God won't move like I need him to move. In my life. Are you being obedient? Mm -hmm. Are you being technical? Are you being analytical? Are you, are, are you trying to put God inside of your mathematic equation say, if I do this, if I do that, then God has to do this. Right. Silly right. rabbit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I got to raise my hand because that would be me. Mm -hmm. That'd be me. I was, I just, I call myself, I'm the silly rabbit. That's me. <laughs> we have to stop allowing what we think, how we feel, what we think we know, or what we think will happen as a result of our choices keep us from obeying God. Yeah. There is no justification for disobeying God. That's true. What a tragedy it would be if you allowed your feelings or being in your feelings to keep you from, to cause you to miss your miracle. Mm. Like you sow in your feelings, you sow in your logic, you sow in your, your deepness that you miss your miracle because you just won't be obedient. Obedience requires faith, obedience requires trust, and that is it. Mm. <laughs> obedience requires faith, obedience requires trust, and that is all. Do you have faith in God? Mm. Do you trust in God? Then why do we struggle to obey Him? All that other stuff God don't need. He needs our obedience. And if you trust him, and if you have faith in him, give him your obedience instead of your excuses. 
Give him your obedience instead of your excuses. Because God doesn't need your excuses. He needs your obedience. And most importantly, we need for God to have our obedience. I pray that you are blessed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now today I am going to pray for everybody. Okay. I'm going to pray for everybody. And my prayer, my prayer is going to be, God, reveal the areas that you are challenging me to be obedient. Amen. God, deliver me from the areas that you are challenging me to be obedient. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. Yes, God. God, we thank you first and foremost for being patient and being long-suffering and being temperate with us in our areas of insecurity, our areas of ignorance, our areas of procrastination, Father God. Lord, whatever it is, Father God, that you have called us to do, those areas that you have made it clear your expectation and requirement for us, that we have fallen short of that criteria, God. And Lord, we pray right now, first and foremost, that you forgive us, Father God, for whatever excuses that we have allowed to be our truth, yes. even though they were in conflict with your truth, God. And Lord, we pray right now that we no longer are satisfied, Lord, knowingly being disobedient, Father God, that we are no longer satisfied with making excuses and justifying why we won't, why we don't. Father God, we pray right now that you, hallelujah, that you expand our faith, God. Hallelujah. That you grow our faith, God. That you stretch our faith, God. And you stretch our trust and our belief and our dependency in you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Oh, Lord, help us, Father God, help to hold God. fast to you. Help us to cling on to you. Help us to clamp ourselves to you, Father God, and hold on to you when the things that seem difficult in the flesh are a part of our journey, Father God. Let us hold on to you to pull us through, Father God. Let us believe and trust in you that you would not lead us into temptation, but you will deliver us from evil, Father God. Let us realize, hallelujah, that in spite of the size of the giant or the obstacle, hallelujah, that when you are for us, you are more than anything that is against us. You're more than sickness yes, against us when we trust in you. You're more than financial problems Thank against us when we trust in you, Father God. We're more than anything. We are more than anything you yes, said God. that we are more than conquerors. Yes, we already God. have the victory when we trust yes. in you, when we rely on you, when we yes, depend God. on you, Father God. Yes, so let God. us not be afraid of you stretching us. Let us not be afraid of you calling us to do more causing us to trust you more causing us yes. to obey you in ways that we have failed it before because there is a victory and there is a promise yes. hallelujah yes. and there is a resource on the other side hallelujah of that obedience God oh, yes. oh there is a manifestation on the other side of that obedience that you're trying to get us to hallelujah there is an epiphany on the other side of yes. that obedience that you are trying yes. to release yes. us to Father God oh help yes. us Father God to rebuke and deny every issue in the flesh that keeps us from obeying you, God. Yes, God. Lord, when those things rise up in us and against us, Father God, let us rebuke them openly with our mouths. Mm. See, doubt you have no place here in the yes, name of right. Jesus. Yes. I trust and obey God. Yes. Fear you have no place here in the name of Jesus. I, I trust and obey God. Past trauma, you have no place here. I trust and obey God. False report by the doctor, I trust and obey God. Yes. Yes. I will do what you tell me to do, yes. Father God. Yes. I will trust you with the results, yes. Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, we bless your name right now. Yes. And we praise your name, yes. Father God, yes. for the greater manifestation yes. that will be a byproduct of the seed of our obedience yes. that we will begin to plant on this day. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Bless you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. You're so worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. 
You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting my blessing. Yes. Listen, yes. listen, I'm expecting my miracle. Hallelujah. I'm expecting an yes. outpouring of the presence of God in my life. And I know exactly what it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me my obedience. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But I'm willing to pay in obedience. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm willing to pay in obedience for overflow. Yeah. I am willing to pay yeah. in obedience for overflow. It's all good. I don't have, it's, there's nothing that I have to offer God that he hasn't already given me anyway. Yeah. He has given me the, uh, the ability to obey. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. We belong to him. Yeah. He's not asking for anything that doesn't already belong to him. Hallelujah. I'm expecting my overflow, man. Yes. My over, Your yeah. overflow is waiting on the other side of your Amen. Praise God. Praise yes. God. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Prophets, you have anything you want to add? <laughs> you got to bless with her. <laughs> no. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, y'all. Let's just one last time. Let's just put our hands together.